Welcome to the Bath Fizz and Foam YouTube channel. My name is Robin French Smith, and today we're going to talk about the color green. Today I want to focus on the color green. Now, we have some excellent color studies on our blog and I will include a link in the description underneath this video so that you can go and see the written version of these color studies. I wanted to try and follow my own color studies and see how easy it was to use them and I found it to be easy there were definitely some points where I was like what was I thinking but I was able to follow my own directions and get some really pretty green bath bombs and so I'm gonna show you in this video me following the color study and doing that the color studies are written in ratios so ratios are telling you to do one part of something to another part of something else the great thing about ratios is that they're really easy to scale if you like the green number five color and you follow that ratio, it doesn't matter what size batch you make, you'll be able to get that green. As long as you start with small increments and work your way up. One of the things I discovered that was kind of confusing in the color studies was that I used 250 grams of bath bomb mix without the citric acid. I don't know why I did this. I don't know what recipe I used to calculate that because I looked at my standard recipe that I have now and even if I break that up, I can't figure out how I got that amount. So it that was a little bit confusing, I'm not gonna lie. The batches that I end up using in this video are 150 grams of bath bomb mix before I add the citric acid. So that part of the green color study did throw me a little bit, I'm not gonna lie. So maybe that's something that in the future I need to go in and clarify in the blog. But the good news is that um, I was still able to get a pretty close approximation to the greens that I expected to get. I did however do three rounds of the green color study and the third round was the final round that I felt like was the closest to the actual greens that I wanted to get. The first round, I used the ratios but I did the exact amount that was listed on the blog. So if the blog said use one teaspoon and a half teaspoon of these colors, I did exactly that. Even though the batch was smaller, the batch I was working with was smaller than the batch that was written in the blog. And as a result, the first round is super saturated, really dark and saturated. The second round that I did, I did half the amount, same ratios, but half the amount that was listed in the blog. Even though my 150 grams of mix is not half of the 250 grams of mix that I was using in the blog, I still reduced my colors by half. Anyway, it ended up being pretty good, pretty close. So I gave it a third shot, and the third shot, I did a quarter of the amount that was listed in the blog. So if the blog said to do one teaspoon and a half teaspoon, I did a quarter teaspoon and an eighth teaspoon. Wait, half teaspoon, where's she? Yeah, <laughs> see the math. What was I thinking? The point is, is that it's the ratios that are important, not the amount listed, because the green color study, the third batch that I do is the closest, in my opinion, to what is on the blog. So if you have tried to follow our color studies and found them maybe a little bit confusing, or you felt like you were maybe, wait, am I dumb? <laughs> You're not alone. I also felt like that reading my own color study. I was like, who wrote this? This is crazy. That the ratios definitely work. You just might want to start off with less and then add more. In the end, I also ended up doing a full size batch. So you guys can see what a full size batch looks like. And I attempted to get green number four and I think it was pretty close. So that's all I'm gonna say about that. To make green, the only colors that you technically need are blue and yellow. 
Now these are lake colorants and all the color studies are actually written with lake colorants, but the ratios hold true even if you're using dyes, although sometimes some dyes are way more potent than their lake counterparts. So if you are doing dyes, you might want to start off in also same, still start off in small batches and work your way up to bigger increments so that you can control that color a little bit more because yeah, dyes are gonna be more potent and so the ratios aren't always gonna be exactly the same, but the concept will hold. Blue and yellow make green. The very first green, green number one, uses blue one and yellow six. Now, I know I have said that with lakes, what you see is what you get. And this does not look like yellow. It also will not color your bath bombs to really look yellow. Your bath bombs will look orange. However, in the water, it will be yellow. It's not gonna make an orange color in your bath water. So it's the odd one of the bunch. When you combine blue one lake with yellow six, something interesting happens. It darkens the color. It gets dark. It darkens the color. So you will need to be careful when you combine these two. It's a great choice though, if you just wanna do a blue and you want it to be like a denim blue, like a deep blue. Um, and in our blue color study, I do go into that. So just be careful when you combine these two, you're not gonna get a bright green. You're gonna get a very deep green and it almost looked black when I was actually working with it. Now in the pictures and in the videos, I feel like you do see that it is green, but just be aware that this is a, combination that you need to be cautious with. These two, however, blue one and yellow five, you can mix these all day long. You will reach a point of saturation where like it's not gonna get any greener than it is, no matter how much more of this you add. <laughs> but these will always make green and you'll always get a really pretty green, even if it's darker than the green you expected. So there's the good news for that. And with that being said, let's get started. All right, so right here you see me separating out a double batch of the basic recipe from my book, Bath Bomb Revolution. And the reason I went ahead and used that recipe other like rather than our high humidity recipe, our low humidity recipe, like those specialty recipes that I use all the time, is because it's a simpler recipe. <laughs> it's just easier to kind of throw it together. So. It, it was a double batch of the basic recipe from my book and each portion I just I just basically put a double batch together and then didn't add the citric acid and then each portion is 160 grams I just divided it by two not two I divided it by five here is the very first green that we are making this is green number one from the color study and like I said, this green has that orn orange six, no, it has yellow six in it, which looks orange. And it makes a very, very dark green. Now this video that you guys are watching is actually the second round. So like I said, I, I did three rounds of these uh, little mini little mini Christmas trees. This is actually the second round. The first round, that green, I accidentally did it third. Like I did it as the third green instead of the first green and then it got really confusing and I didn't want to confuse you guys. Like the goal is to make it not conf as confusing. So anyway, this is actually round two that you're seeing me make and it does actually look green there in the bowl. I mean, it's dark. It's a very, very dark green, but in real life, it feels like it's almost black. So, I mean, it's good to know that and like with the the lighting of photography does sometimes change how these things look. So, I mixed the color in really, really well and then I added my citric acid, added my binder, went ahead and did a drop test probably that I didn't show you and then made three little three little Christmas trees with it. And I will show you at the end of each color, green one, green two, green three, green four, green five, I'll show you all three of the rounds all together. So this is all three of the rounds and the darkest round was round one, the one in the middle is round two, which we watched and 
round three was the one at the end. So you can see that no matter what, you're gonna get a nice dark green with that. The saturation is kind of up to you. Here we are using green number two from the color study. Now the rest of the greens, we're just going to use yellow five. We're not gonna go back to that yellow six color because I mean, the point was I wanted to show that you could actually make green with yellow six. It's just gonna make a really, really dark green because I think every year <laughs> at some point during the year, somebody asks me, how do they get a hunter green? How do they get a forest green? Like that really deep green. And I try not to use those kinds of names for green because, or any color, <laughs> because what is hunter green to me may not be to you. <laughs> I had a client one time who wanted teal, like it was a nightmare. She wanted teal, I, I my idea of what teal was was not the same as hers and it was really, really, really difficult. So um, it's easier, you know, if I don't give it that name. But I can say that if you, if you want a dark green, go for that first green blend. The second green blend is a really nice teal. <laughs> It is though, like that's teal, right? That's teal. I mean, it's a green, it's a green teal, but it, okay, anyway. Anyway, uh, it's a really pretty green. It's, it's a really pretty green. And I probably, it's probably my second favorite green of all these greens. Uh, my favorite green is gonna be green number four. There is all three of them together, and I forgot to mention in the first one, but right there in the little corner, that is the expected color that we should get, and I feel like that third batch really nailed it on that one. The third round was like really close to what we expected to get. Here we go with green number three. Now, I feel like green number three and green number two are very, very close to each other, so, you know, that's one of the things where some, sometimes, and I know with this color study, this is one of the first ones I did, so each of the greens is a like, distinct and different green. I do think that there are some color sto studies where I end up doing like, this is the same color as this, only this is a more saturated version of that. So I don't know if I'm impressed with myself over that or not. We'll see what happens when I get to it, but um, for now, we're doing the green color study, and green two and green three are very close to each other, but they are they are different. And you can see, I think especially at the like at the end of each um, color, as I show you the little uh, picture where it has all three together, you're going to be able to see how the first and second round, round one, round two, are. Both of, I think, I feel like for every color, they're almost identical. And then it's that third round where I added less color and you really see that distinction. So I feel like it is important to keep in mind that sometimes less is more. Like you don't need super heavily saturated colors. And if you want the water to have that deep saturation, um, you, I, would, I would definitely say like you could pair dyes and lakes together. So as you can see, they are very similar. Two and three are similar. And here we do have that shot of all three of them together. This is green three, and then that is the expected color on the left. And I would say the middle batch for that one was probably the closest to what I expected to get. Here we go with green number four. And once again, we are gonna be making uh, a nice bright green, but I would say this is probably one of my favorite greens. Like this, this is generally like my go-to green. If I'm gonna make green, I'm either gonna do green number two or this one, green number four. I just really like how bright it is and it's just a happy green. <laughs> like I really like grass green kind of color like that. So it's it's a good green, what, what can I say? I feel like it's also very distinct from the other greens and it, it's just gonna be nice and bright. Now, obviously you could keep adding color and you can make it more saturated if you want. What was really interesting was, I don't know if I show this in this video, but when I lay out all the colors, um, there's a point where this green four actually, the green five actually 
feels as dark as green four in the darker batches, like in round one or round two. So that's kind of interesting. It was that was just interesting for me to see, like, oh, you could actually could get this. This green could be that one if it was just heavily saturated. This it's a completely different ratio, but like at a certain point, the saturation is just too much, and that's all the color it will hold. So, and there we, what? Well, okay, there. There we go. It's a nice bright green though, isn't it? I, I mean, I don't know. That's my favorite green. When people say they want a Christmas green, that's what I'm thinking. And right there on the left, that is the expected color payout. I would say that the somewhere between the middle and the far right one is the actual like closest one in my opinion. And here we go with green five. Now one of the things I didn't do when I'm showing you all the little bath bombs laying together, like one, two, three, um, I did not do any color corrections on those. And usually I do put some color correction on my video. But the reason I didn't do that was because what I noticed is as I like pull away from the bath bombs and then zoom into them, the amount of white in the background affects how bright they look so that's one of the reasons like I kind of do a couple different angles I'm kind of coming around it from different sides because I really want to show you like it may look one way in the camera but in real life it's actually it can actually look a lot different and photography is it can look a lot lot different when you're taking pictures so it's just something to keep in mind if you're photographing your stuff if not don't worry about it this is green number five, and it is a super bright acid green. It's really hard, like it's hard for you, for me to, I think, correctly convey to you how bright of a green this is. When people say they want lime green or an apple green, this would be the green that I would reach for first. Uh, in my opinion, it's got that, it's just got that like, bright tart green color so I really like this green as well but I'm a little bit biased green's my favorite color what can I say and there they all are lined up on the tray together and there they all three are and the color on the left was our expected color and this one for sure round three was the um the closest in my opinion to what we expected to get here they all are, all together. Round one is at the top, round two is in the middle, and round three is on the bottom. You can really see the distinction now. Okay, so I couldn't, I, I was almost done with this green color study, and I realized that I needed to do a little bit more and show you what it would look like if I was following the green color study, not as a color study, but like following it in a batch. So in this batch, I wanted to get green four. And so I pulled one of the Christmas trees off of uh, the third batch and we're doing green four. And I feel like this nails it. It is exactly green four. I followed the exact ratio and I just added the <laughs> amount until I got to the color I wanted to. And I think it looks perfect, honestly. One of the reasons I do like to use ratios and not tell you use one teaspoon of this and two teaspoons of that is because different colors from different suppliers can have different strengths. And so it really has to do with the dye load that the lake or the dye, if you're using dye, with their dye load, with the dye load that they have. And so this batch right here, I used Muddy Soap Co's new batch certified lakes and I feel like the color is so rich and so beautiful on these. So I would highly recommend them if you're looking to start your lake collection. It's a good, I'll leave a link in the description. Um, but yeah, I feel like it totally nailed that green number four from the green color study. And here is the little dinosaur in the water. I accidentally broke one of them quote unquote accidentally. I accidentally broke one and so I had to use it, of course. And look at how gorgeous it looks in the water. I mean, guys, come on. You just don't get much better than that. I, I don't know, it's pretty. So this is for all the people who say that lakes won't color your bath 
bombs or they won't color the foam and all that stuff. They totally will. They, they totally will when they're used in the correct concentrations and really good supplies from good suppliers. This video wouldn't be complete without me taking just a second to say thank you to our Patreon BFFs. We have a great time in Patreon and the Patreon uh, supporters, their names are scrolling across the screen right now, as you can see. They have been super patient with me as I have been attempting to complete this green color study. So thank you, Patreon BFFs. And um, even if you aren't a Patreon BFF, you know, still thank you. All right, guys, that wraps up our green color study on YouTube. If you need more information, obviously you could go to our blog, which I will leave a link in the description so you could go find our blog and find out more information about this color study. You could also join our Facebook group, Bath Fizz and Foam, Bath Bomb and Bubble Bar Support Group. We are a community of friendly, kind, helpful makers and we would love to see you there. Like this video so that YouTube knows that I'm doing things. You could also subscribe because then when I post more color studies, you'll be notified and you'll be able to like keep up with us as we go through this. That's all that I have for you guys today. Thank you so much for hanging out with me and as always, happy.